we just got done talking about air pressure and the thing with air pressure is we um, see the movement of these large air masses and these air masses are what helps influence the um, pressure in a certain area and then because of the differences in pressures we see um, things like fronts and uh, the development of our winds and what an air mass is is just a huge body of air that has a similar temperature um, and moisture to the air around it and because of this it's going to then bring the similar weather to a certain area whether that be um, you know a bright sunny day or you know um, cold and dreary and as these large air masses move into a region they are going to bring weather that lasts for several days we classify our air masses in two different ways the first is by their source or the region in which they develop and the um, two different types of regions are either polar or tropical. Polar um, air mass, as you can imagine, comes from the colder regions. It, it forms up near the poles. Tropical is then the opposite. It forms in warmer regions or near um, the equator in the tropical part of the world. The second way we classify our air masses then is by the surface in which they form. So are they forming over water or are they forming over land? If they form over land, we call these continental air masses. And if they form over um, water, we call them maritime uh, air masses. And then together, you can see on the picture in the upper right hand corner that we have either a maritime polar um, or maritime tropical, meaning if it's um, forming over water in starting in the polar region or the tropical region and then we also have continental polar and continental tropical um, forming over land near the poles forming over land near the tropics here's just a larger map um, so that you can see a little bit better um, you can see that the two main air masses that influence um, us in the united states are the continental polar um, air masses coming from um, up in Canada and working its way from kind of down through the central United States over towards the East Coast and then the maritime tropics um, air masses uh, forming in the Gulf and in the southern Pacific and then working their way into the United States as I just said uh, most of the United States affected by um, the two, those two main air masses. Um, that continental polar air mass forming in Canada and Alaska is going to bring that cooler dry air. Um, not a whole lot of moisture associated with these. We get clear skies. Um, if you have ever heard of lake effect snow um, up in the Midwest, in Michigan especially, on the west uh, western part of Michigan, there's a lot of lake effect snow because that continental polar air mass is bringing um, is moving across Lake Michigan to then pick up some moisture to produce large amounts of snow um, in western Michigan. And then the maritime tropic forming in the Gulf um, in the Caribbean is going to bring those warmer temperatures, a lot of moisture. Um, because of all the moisture we're going to see high humidities, unstable air, um, and then more precipitation. minor roles um, in the United States are the maritime polar air masses and the continental tropical or the continental tropic air masses. Um, the maritime polar um, occur in the winter. They bring um, lots of snow because of the moisture they pick up um, over the oceans. They come from the Pacific or the Atlantic. Um, coming, you know, this is where we get the term the, the nor'easter, the um, cold moist air coming from the um, northern Atlantic. The continental tropics start, starting in Mexico or the southwest United States um, has very little influence um, in relation to the rest of the air masses because um, it is much smaller in, in nature um, and it gets kind of pushed around by the maritime tropic and the continental polar. As these air masses are moving we then start to see fronts and fronts are just when two air masses meet. There's four different types of fronts, the first being a warm front, um, we have cold fronts, stationary fronts, and occluded fronts. A warm front is 
when warm air moves into an area of cooler air it's symbolized on a weather map by a red line that has red half circles on one side of that line um, these warm fronts move slow they produce rain over large areas for a long period of time because of the fact that they are moving slow through the region um, the types of clouds you can expect to see in a warm front are cirrus cirrostratus alto stratus or nimbo stratus um, they're going to be the kind of smaller lighter clouds um, if the nimbo stratus is when uh, you start to see um, more per, uh, more rain produced in that area and then uh, hence the name uh, warm front we will be followed by warm weather after that front moves through the area cold fronts are the opposite cold fronts are when cold dense air moves into an area occupied by warmer air um, we're going to see this symbolized on a weather map by a blue line with uh, with blue triangles on one side of it going, pointing in the direction in which it is moving um, with cold fronts you can expect um, violent rain or violent weather storms heavy downpours a lot of winds um, those cumulonimbus um, thunder clouds that we talked about in our last module cold fronts do move faster than warm fronts which is why we have much more violent weather associated with them because since they're moving through the area quick they're forcing the warm air up above the cold air much faster um, and which is then giving that vertical cloud development that you can see in the diagram moving across the screen in the bottom right corner and again with the name cold front you we then get cold air um, and cold weather um, after the front has moved through stationary fronts are when warm and cold uh, f warm and cold air masses are moving parallel to one another they're not overtaking each other um, and because of since they're not overtaking each other and they're moving parallel they don't really move hence the name stationary um, we get we see this symbolized on a weather map by alternating blue um, triangles and red um, semicircles on opposite sides of the line um, on some weather maps uh, you will see this also um, a kind of pinkish purple color it just depends on who created the map but the biggest thing to remember with this is the symbol itself the triangles on one side uh, of the line the semicircles on the other and they are alternating every other occluded fronts is our last front and that's when a cold front overtakes a warm front um, and this is going to give us a very complex weather pattern we're going to get um, heavy amounts of rain followed by um, a light rain um, and the reason is because the rain comes from the warm air being pushed up by the cold front so if you look at the three diagrams on the right you can see the warm front there so the warm air is moving into an area of cool air giving us um, kind of a light rain over a long period of time um, you can see the angle at which the front is approaching is much lower than the cold front moving in on the left the cold front comes in giving us that um, vertical cloud development the storms well since cold fronts move faster than warm fronts eventually the cold front um, is going to catch or the cold air is going to catch up with the other cold air in front of the warm front when that happens it's forcing the warm air completely out of the picture um, so when they first meet we're going to get it extreme amounts of heavy rain um, and then as that warm air um, moves even further out of the picture we will get um, just light precipitation over a long period of time until eventually the warm air is completely gone and the two cold air masses just meet up with one another